how do you cope with the megalomania of being an international movie star? I look at someone like Tom Cruise and I do have sympathy with him because I think he can't go anywhere. Everybody's now a journalist with cameras uh, on their phones. They can zap you either in a picture or video and that's then sold to these websites that then get sold to the TV. You're not safe really anywhere unless you're in your, in your home or your hotel room as we are today. How did you deal with the fame? Was it a problem then or did they just leave you alone? They have always basically left me alone. Why? I don't know. I think it's because my life is an open book anyway. What is this? What secret will they uncover? You know, I'm not a fashion model, so it's not like, oh, look, what she's wearing today is a piece of nothing. I don't have that problem and never have, although when I was younger, they weren't as prolific as they are now. I mean, now they've got ways of hiding under your bed, for God's sake. Never found it then. But, you know, even though I'm still around and doing things, probably they don't care what I do. That's probably more it. But they didn't, even in the days when I was really hot and um, young and all that, they were, they were cooler about it then. I really feel for these kids who were trying to deal with this constant scrutiny and flashbulbs and stuff. It's just, and for their children, oh my God. That would drive me nuts. Can I ask you some silly but really fascinating questions like, what are you most proud of? What film were you most proud of? What stage show were you most proud of? God, what am I most proud of has nothing to do with films. Um, I'm proud of my uh, stable way of thinking. Interesting, isn't it, when people, some people call me wacky? I don't think so. I think I have a very stable kind of understanding uh, the bigger picture. Film most proud of, probably Terms of Endearment. It was very difficult to make and we got through it. Stage most proud of, The Palladium in London. That's my, that's I'm most proud of that. I found my stage legs here and with the English audience. I think they enjoyed my bodiness. <laughs> Um, okay, that would be, yeah, Palladium London. As a performer, can film ever compare with the stage? It's totally different, isn't it? Yeah, nothing can compare with the stage. I mean, there's an example of karma right there. What you put out, you get back. I just love that feeling. And what I also loved was the silence that you induce in the audience. So when the glasses are chinkling with ice in Las Vegas, you know you're doing something wrong. There's a lot of coughing and spitting going on in the audience, let's say in a legitimate theater. No, no, you're doing something wrong. But I think they're all waiting for authenticity from the performer. Is that person really being themselves? Are they totally committed to the part they're playing and so forth? But there's nothing like it. In a, in a, also, when you do stage work, you have to be physically, spiritually, mentally healthy. You cannot get drunk at night uh, and expect to do it well the next day. You can't run in a rainstorm for a cab in a city street or you might slip and fall, then what? You can't um, be reckless with how you treat yourself on the stage. You have to have all of those uh, human attributes and requirements going and stabilize. Film, it doesn't matter. You come in, you've been drunk all night as I've watched some of my buddies be. I never had the freedom to let myself get drunk and stuff like that and then work the next day. You always come back and do it again. You know that you can, you know that the crew will understand. Not true with a real, live, authentic audience. They don't understand, they want you to be perfect. This is a really impossible question, but who's impressed you the most of all the people you've worked with? that I've worked with. Oh golly, everybody for a different reason. The people who are free to invent in every take are the ones who've impressed me. Jack Nicholson, brilliant at that. Jack Lemmon, no. Jack Lemmon was very studied, knew exactly what he was doing and brilliant at it, a real pro. But I sort of, for my taste, I like that Frank never rehearsed, as I mentioned before. The ones who are uh, Meryl Streep, absolutely brilliant, and Nicole, by the way, in the same category. Those people have the, 
freedom, or maybe it's the psychological need to be somebody else, and they completely allow themselves to be that mercurial person. But they're the ones that impress me the most. Can you have genuine connection with somebody on film or even on stage if you don't like them as a person? Is that possible to create that magic without oh, yeah. it being there? I did it with Deborah Winger. I couldn't stand her. <laughs> uh uh. And nor did she like me. And we there, uh, mother and daughter, it created magic. I think that was the method in Jim Brooks's madness, too. I think he knew that he, if, we, if he put us together, that it wouldn't gel really and that was the tension he got on the screen very finally talk to us about your current project with uh, Richard Attenborough certainly a legend a guy who has got an amazing back catalogue like yourself what was it like working with him and are you proud of the new film very proud of it uh, Dickie as he's often said you can't be a good director if you haven't been an actor we've been friends for 50 years we did a picture together 50 years ago or whenever that was he gave me the freedom to do nothing on closing the ring. He knew exactly what he wanted as I portrayed this woman who was afraid to feel grief. And he would walk in the middle of a scene and say, no, 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 don't, don't let me see that emotion. I don't want to see it. And I would stop it. He, he has a nose like a bloodhound about expressing emotion. Uh, to sit at the table. I just found it fascinating because I had dinner with him every night, he and Sheila, and I watched this. He's also a diabetic, you might not know. So I found a place in Santa Fe that makes sugar-free chocolate, and I just should have brought some, and I, I forgot it. Thank you so much for talking to me today. My final question is this. How do you view your career now? When you look at your early you, do you see that as you now, or is that just some other Shirley MacLaine that happens to be on the telly? Yeah. I find that sometimes I look, I can't remember how I could have been like that. You have that sensibility, but that goes with memory and aging anyway. So then you adjust to the fact that what you're doing today is much more important than what you can't remember about yesterday. What's your greatest moment ever? Oh, Alan. <laughs> oh my God, the greatest memory. I can't say, I don't even want to. All right, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for talking to me today. Shirley MacLaine's new book, Saging While Aging, is in your stores now. It is fascinating. It is enlightening. Um, it is certainly different. And thank God for you being you. There aren't many people who say what they think anymore. They're so frightened of people saying, I don't agree with you. And you certainly don't have that fear whatsoever, do you? Don't have that fear, but I don't care if they agree with me or not. Maybe, maybe someone said to me once, the secret of life. Didn't you ask me that in the beginning of this interview? I would have to say loving without caring. 